So today we're diving into some major news from OpenAI and uh, it's got everybody talking. So the big thing in AI has been all about scaling, just making the models bigger, feeding them tons of data, and then boom, we have super intelligent AI, right? And a lot of people have a problem with that. They think that maybe that's not gonna be happening anytime soon. Like what if there's a cap on how smart AI can get just by getting bigger? if the scaling laws no longer apply. And that's what we're unpacking today. Getting behind the ChatGPT hype to see where OpenAI is really heading. So here's what caught my eye. OpenAI's next big model, Orion. Everyone was expecting it to be the next big thing after GPT-4, after O1. O1 was sort of a taste of that. But it seems like if this article is to be believed, like the improvements weren't as revolutionary as everyone expected. What does that mean for the whole idea of the scaling laws? Just more data, more compute, longer training runs, just bigger means better models. And this is huge because it questions that assumption that more data and more computing power will just naturally sort of organically make AI smarter. But is there a limit to how much intelligence we can squeeze out of scaling? And get this, Orion might be better at certain language tasks, but not necessarily at coding. So if just making it bigger doesn't make it universally better, does that mean we're headed towards specialized AI tools rather than just this one mega model that does everything? And here's another thing OpenAI is hitting. They're running low on new high quality data. They've basically scraped it in a dry, books, articles, code, everything. And now the next kind of big thing is using AI generated data to train future models. So this is known as synthetic data. And of course, the critics of this idea, they're saying, well, this is kind of like a snake eating its own tail. There might be a risk of this inbreeding effect where the new models become too similar to the old ones, stifling any fresh innovation. There's this idea of a collapse where little mistakes, little problems, as you create more and more synthetic data, they kind of multiply and compound. And over time, as we create new models with synthetic data, as we continue that process, there's sort of this collapse. So again, keep in mind that this is kind of speculation. So a lot of people from different AI firms, both the researchers and the people running the companies are saying that we're probably not going to be hitting any of these bottlenecks, but also, you can say they might have an incentive for saying so. So just kind of take everything with a grain of salt. But if this idea is correct and bigger isn't always better and we're running low on data, then what's OpenAI's next move? Well, we know that they're shifting focus a little bit, or at least adding another way to grow and improve these models. They're working on making models that are better after sort of the initial training. So you train up a model, it's this good, right? And then what do we do after to improve it, to make it better, smarter? Now, of course, they're using methods like reinforcement learning, where the model learns by trial and error, almost like teaching a dog a new trick with treats for getting it right. And of course, we have human feedback. OpenAI has been using it a ton to make ChatGPT more helpful and safer. It's like having a team of editors to keep the model on track. Dario Amade was recently on the Lex Friedman podcast saying how they, of course, use this RLHF, right? So reinforcement learning, human feedback for the new models. And in fact, whenever you interact with ChatGPT or Claude, you're helping improve that model. And as Dario Amade said, they use kind of that storage of data from the previous models to train the new models. So as they're getting more data about user preferences, those do get used to train further models. But let's come back to OpenAI and their other model, the new model, the O1. It's being referred to as a reasoning model. Instead of just spitting out the first answer, it actually takes a moment to think things through, kind of like it ponders for a little bit. And of course, that takes extra computing power. There's a bit of a debate about that. Some investors are nervous, questioning whether more processing power is really leading to better intelligence, or maybe we're hitting a wall. And that's kind of the million dollar question. If scaling is hitting a certain limit, does the future of AI lie in specialized tools rather than one all powerful kind of one AI to rule them all, if you will? And while some areas might be plateauing, AI is still making great strides in complex tasks like 
coding, like problem solving. We're seeing breakthroughs in math, physics, etc. So even if uh, one giant model sort of hits a wall, there's a sort of like plateauing effect, right? Maybe a bunch of smaller, more specialized models can be created to tackle specific challenges to kind of keep this boom going. Now let's bring it back to OpenAI. So they're dealing with scaling limitations, again, maybe, right? So they're using post training techniques and might even be changing how they're naming their models. So it feels like we're at a real turning point in AI development where just the size of the model alone isn't everything. And this shift reflects a deeper change in OpenAI's mission, moving away from bigger is better mindset to prioritizing things like reasoning, safety, alignment. So instead of just trying to make the AI models big, it's about making AIs that are generally good and help us in meaningful, specific ways. So if this is correct, where does this leave us? Well, it feels like AI is maturing, like we're moving into a new phase where we're not just automating tasks, but actually enhancing human capabilities. But we've got to consider the challenges ahead because keep in mind, a lot of big companies, a lot of big investors are pouring money into various AI infrastructure projects. Microsoft is uh, powering up an actual nuclear power plant. Google is doing something similar, right? Of course, Nvidia is betting big on various AI infrastructure, you know, chips and stuff like that's being a thing and rapidly increasing. Do those ideas change if all of a sudden we realize that we kind of got these models as big as, as they need to be, as they could be. And now it's more about kind of like breaking them apart into specific little insects, almost like very specialized things that move around and do their own little things. Does that change the approach? Let me know what you think in the comments. If you made this far, consider subscribing. Give this video a thumbs up. It's what us YouTubers crave. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.